in the creation, you have Adam. And Adam is male slash female. Hebrew doesn't have the and. And when Jesus refers to this passage, he doesn't use an and. It's male, female. So Adam is a composite being, belonging equally to male and female. Let us make Adam in our likeness, in the image of God made he him male, female, made he them. So in the second clause, it's spoken in both singular and plural. And you have a composite being. But the female is asleep within him. Have you not read, Matthew 19, that he who made them, and there is no them in the original, he who made from the beginning made them male, female. Right? So you have Adam who's a composite being. Here you have, and, and he's not only created, he's also formed. There is a maturing process, there is conversation that takes place, there's relationship, and he is created inside the word, which means that the entire cosmos, which will include you, is in him from the beginning. Which means that you were found in Jesus before you were ever lost in Adam. So now we've got human creation, unbelievable creation in likeness, an image of this. Word, Spirit, God. Elohim, right? In their oneness. And God says to Adam five things. Five blessings, and they're all in the plural. Right? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, steer it, uh, have dominion, steerage, and subdue it. Five. They're all in the plural, even though he's standing there in the singular. The sense of male, female in the Hebrew language is more related to ish and isha. Ish is, is male, ish, self. Isha is the female self. Ish and isha. Yeah. I always say it's a guy thing. He's ish, he's going, where is... Ish. Ah. I'm not going to spend a lot of time backing up everything that I say, but you need to understand, my journey into the Trinity, into this, came from my issues that are related to gender. I'm a missionary kid and a preacher's kid. I grew up in the church my whole life. One of the dominant questions of my life, because all, virtually all my damage came from men. And I'm in a very hierarchical, fundamental evangelical background. And one of my questions that you weren't allowed to talk about was, if men are obviously so much more screwed up than women, how come they're in charge? <laughs> right? That drove me into 25 years of work, which you are going to hear parts of today, this morning and this afternoon, on trying to deal with these questions dealing with every passage in Scripture that's related to this question, right? And I, that's what I write from. So, let me give you the broad strokes of what goes on in this story. And you know what? When you hear a story and the narrative changes, everything changes. So, God says to Adam, look, you can eat of any tree here, don't eat of that one the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. On the day that you eat of it, in dying you will die. It's a double in the Hebrew. In dying you will die. Now, she, Isha, is still asleep within him. Okay? And you have this whatever long period of time where he gets to know all the animals and he gets to name them and he is in this process and the process, if you're from Canada, and... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, there is all this stuff going on, and um, he has this, this sense of not having a counterpart. Look, counterpart, face to face. Okay? Now, there's this interesting verse. Everything is very good, very good, good, very good, very good, not so good. Okay? And we interpret the not so good in a way that's incorrect. It is not good that Ish is in his separation. That's what it means. It is not good that Ish is in his separation. See, Ish was created right here. <clears throat> Inside this relationship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And now there's a separation? See, there is a phrase in the Hebrew that says, you're alone. That's not this phrase. What's going on here? You see, we make a whole bunch of assumptions about this passage. And one of our assumptions is that it wasn't until the little conversation where he eats, uh, he is given the fruit by Isha, and he eats, that that's when sin enters the world. Wrong. In the instructions that God gives specifically to him, and also, you need to know when it says, on the day you eat of it, it's in second person, masculine, singular. You, Ish, on the day you eat of it, in dying you'll die. It's not prescriptive, it's future. It's just simple future. You are, this is, on the day you eat of it. Okay, so, what's happened? Well, in that conversation, he, well, it just tells you that he is, the, the, that Adam is given, he is to keep, uh, to tend and to keep the garden, right? Tend and keep. Hmm. Problem. The word keep is kind of an important word. It comes as an old English word. It's from the, the part of the castle that is the final point of resistance against the forces that are penetrating it, right? It's the keep. Now, it comes up again in a short period of time after this introduction that he is supposed to keep the garden. It shows up again, the same word. You know where it's used? The cherubim that are placed to guard the way back to the tree of life. Same word. They're there to keep it. To, to protect it from intrusion. Where is the first time you see uh, Lucifer, the enemy, the snake, the dragon? Where do you see him the first time? In the garden. What happened? Didn't keep it. And it's not good that he be in a separation. If you start looking through the old scholars, they are going to be, you're going to hear this underlying unanimous conversation about, unless they've really gotten into the we hate women and it's all her fault stuff. But you're going to hear that the understanding is, is that the male has already rebelled, is in his separation, and he didn't keep it. He has entertained this conversation, and he is down the road. Eight times in the New Testament, Paul and the writers in the New Testament say, through one male, sin entered the world. Twice they refer to the woman, and both times they say she was thoroughly deceived. The Greek language that is used is for thoroughly deceived. But through one male, sin enters the world. Eight times, for clarification, Okay, so what's going on here? How does that change the narrative if he has already joined Lucifer in a rebellion? Where does she get her information about the limitations of what they're allowed to do or not allowed to do in terms of the relationship to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? She gets it from him. Isha gets her information because she wasn't there. She wasn't awake during the conversation. So now the scholars also start saying she is withdrawn from him as the way to save him. 
that that's why she is brought forth. Why did Jesus come as a male? Because it's the place of greatest loss. Through one male, sin enters the world. Part of the answer to that question is it's the place of greatest loss. So what's going on here in this story, in this narrative? Well, there is this little conversation that takes place, and there are three parties involved in it, Ish, Isha, and Lucifer. Very interesting, right? We've got, actually, it's, it's more like this. Isha, Ish, and Lucifer. And Lucifer starts the conversation by a direct attack against her. And he's doing the guy thing. <laughs> right? And what is the attack? The attack is against the character and nature of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is an attack against the character of God because that's the only certainty that there is. You know, God's not good all the time. I mean, he said that? Oh, it's not true. He'll lie to you. He doesn't want you to become everything you were intended to be. What did he say about, the, about that tree? She says, and she expands on it in one way and detracts on it another. But she is saying what she knows. Where does she get that information? How come she's expanding on it? And if it's wrong, how come he keeps his mouth shut? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. He stands there knowing the truth and allows Lucifer to absolutely thoroughly deceive her. And he doesn't say a thing. Why? Because he has already joined the character assassination of God. He is already in his separation. And so he lets Lucifer deceive her. And she eats of the fruit and gives it to her husband who is with her. Immediately they are naked. They know it. Whatever that sense of the glory of God or however you want to understand it. And they're hiding. And God comes and says, where are you? Which is not cosmic hide and seek. He knows where they are. And the where are you is masculine singular. Ish, where are you? You then have this unbelievably powerful conversation. And the first thing is that God directs the conversation at Ish. What did you do? And by the way, when you look at this thing, it's going to be because you did this, Ish, this is going to happen. Because you did this, Lucifer, this is going to happen. That never happens in the conversation with Isha. It is never because you did this, this is going to happen. Or not, you know, because there is not that sense of putting it at the center of whatever is going on here in this story. But this conversation takes place. What did you do? Listen to what happens. That's okay. Those things go off all the time. I better make sure mine's off. Okay, we're good. So, if I can do this, if, this, this will help you understand kind of what happened here. So, let's say we have, a, we have a table in the middle of the forest. And we have on this side, this represents the triangle that, we tried to, that Baxter was trying to do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have Ish and Isha, right? On this side of the table, in this sense, is Lucifer. And Lucifer is over here on this side of the table because of what? Because he's got his finger in the face of God going, can't trust him, they're not good all the time, right? Attacking the character of God. 
God says, Ish, what happened? What did you do? Read it. He walks around the table, points a finger in God's face, and says, the woman you gave me. Right? It is a direct attack against the character of God. He has fully joined Lucifer in distrusting the character of the Father and the Son and the Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Isha. Isha, what, did, what happened? He, and I don't know if she is pointing to Lucifer or to Adam. He deceived me, and I ate. Because at this point, they are one and the same voice. She says, he deceived me, and I ate. Was she telling the truth? Absolutely. She told the truth. He joined Lucifer in an accusation against the character of God. And what is God's response to this? All right, you two, listen up. Through her will come your salvation. Through her will come your destruction. And there's going to be enmity placed between you and her because you know your destruction's coming through her. The enmity is not placed between these two. They're on the same team. And the history of religion is God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the woman against the man and Lucifer. Every religious system dominates and has an enmity against women. And the more demonic it gets, the more outright the viciousness of the attack. So you have militias in Congo that are tying women to trees and raping them all day long under the influence of the demonic because there is an enmity here. And if there is an enmity here, there is a sensitivity at the spiritual level between these two. What happens if you shut this voice off? You get all kinds of carnage where men make their decisions in this association without this voice where there is an enmity between. And God says, Isha. And the way it's translated in the, in the uh, King James is wrong. And it's, it's only been translated in any English version since the medieval ages. Prior to that, it was universally translated, even back in the Church Fathers, by Tertullian and Irenaeus and all those guys, as one thing. During the medieval ages, it, the word got changed. And in the King James, it still has the wrong translation. And it says, your desire will be for the man, and he will rule over you. Not shall, and, and the word desire is wrong. It's future simple. This is, the, this is the verse that in my second class of Old Testament survey in seminary, I was asked to no longer ask any more questions in class. <laughs> because my professor translated that verse as, and he should rule over you. Desire is not the word desire. And it was never translated that way, and I've got all the support for this. It was always translated as turning. You're turning. See, we were created to be in this. And God says, Isha, your turning will be to the man. And he will rule over you. Oh, and by the way, Ish, you have to leave the garden. You're in your rebellion. I don't want you to end up stuck inside your rebellion forever. You do not have access to the tree of life, and we will make sure. You are going to get an escort out of the garden. Read it. She is never expelled from the garden, 
nor is she restricted from the tree of life. Both times it mentions it, it's him. Because he is in his rebellion, in association with Lucifer, and God does not want him to be able to access the tree of life in that state because there is something about it that would lock him into it eternally. Your turning will be to him. And he'll rule over you. Why? And why the turning? We have this tendency to move toward our proximate source. She was drawn out of him. And she was drawn out as a help meet for him, which is Old English. And the word help is used, a couple times it's used of an entire people group, but other than that, it's exclusively used for God and Isha. We look, you know, we look to the mountains from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh, our help cometh from the Lord. That verse, help, same word. Right? Same word. Five minutes, okay. Same word, our help. You know, by the way, that verse means, does not mean we look to the hills because that's where God is. It's like we look to the hills from whence cometh our help. It's a question because that's where all the cultic, uh, in the high places, that's where all the worship was happening. And so it's an actual opposition. From whence comes our help? No, our help comes from the Lord, right? It's not coming from the high places and the high hills, you know, just so you know. I see it in little things, all plaques and stuff, you know. It's like, oh, good, God's up on the hills. So now he is, by the way, but uh, you know, it's not what it means. So here you've got the turning. She turns to him now, and what does she demand of him? Everything that was here. You know what was here? Identity, worth, value, significance, security, meaning, purpose, destiny, and love. That is what is inside this great dance that we were created in. And now she turns to that which she was drawn out of and says... You need to give me identity, worth, value, significance, security, meaning, purpose, destiny, and love. And he says, I'm not God. And when you catch shame, you're going to get fight or flight. And he has ruled over her. Now, he did a turning as well. But see, at least she turns from one relationship to another relationship. There is something about that that is really solid, right? Because remember, Baxter talking about person and what it is? This otherness, this community, this, you know? She at least turns to a relationship. Lucifer kind of gets out of the scene here. What does he turn to? What was he drawn out of? The ground. He turns to the ground in the works of his hands. And he says about his work and what he does. You give me identity and worth and value and significance and security and meaning and purpose and destiny and love. You give it to me. And the ground says, oh, I, I'm not God. Thistles and thorns. <laughs> What's the call of the gospel? Re return. 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 She was the first believer. When she had her first child, and she followed him out, obviously. Doesn't talk about it, but she obviously followed him out. Because he couldn't get back in. She follows him out. She has a child. She says in the Hebrew, I have gotten a male child, the Lord. First time a human being utters the word Jehovah. Lord. Jesus 
first time mentioned by Mary, and Christos, anointed one, first time mentioned, mentioned by Hannah, three women. I have begotten a man-child, the Lord. She thought Cain was going to be the deliverer, the one that saved the world. And obviously by the time Abel was born, she knew something had gone sideways because Abel means sighing or breath or hope is fading away. And her first son kills her second son, like the first Adam will kill the second Adam. And scripture calls her, it says that Adam named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. Really? Think about it. At the point of this rebellion, what does Adam know about himself? He's dead. He's dead. On the day you eat of it, in dying you will die. And he knows he's dead. And knows that she is the mother of the living. Because through her will come the seed. This is the backdrop of the entire conversation. Jesus comes as a male because he needs to redeem the entire cosmos and has to go to the place of greatest loss. Not by the will of the flesh, nor by the will of a male, an heir, not anthropos, an heir. Not by the will of a male. comes to be the Redeemer. And the cry goes out, return. Unless you have a marriage seminar that says, okay, women, you need to turn to your husbands because, you know, they can give you identity and worth and value and significance and security and meaning and purpose and, you know, destiny. And, 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 and men, you need to turn to the ground. You know, do a better job at work and stuff like this. And... <laughs> And men are, men are so sure they're not God and can't do this and so shamed about it that they will die sooner than the women just to get out of the deal. <laughs> right? But that's the backdrop within which we have this conversation. There is a whole different narrative going on here. Right? It changes everything. And it changes every issue of the passages in the New Testament that become a problem. The history of religion, and I could spend two hours here telling you how women have been absolutely placed at the center of blame for the fallenness of the entire creation. And scripture is adamant. But she was deceived also. Deceived. one man. And Jesus dies to deceive them. And in him, he is the creator. In him, everything lives and moves and has its being. And when he dies, it all dies. And when he rises, it all rises. To the praise of his glory. Amen? Amen.